Welcome. My name is Victor Behel. I am uh, a principal researcher in Microsoft Research. I also manage the networking group uh, here in MSR. And I'm very excited to tell you about this project that we're pursuing uh, with great passion and vigor called Project Hawaii. So let me begin by, by talking a little bit about the evolution of computing. And if you haven't done so, there's a really nice art, uh, uh, study by Morgan and Stanley which talks about five cycles of computing. And the first one being the supercomputers followed by the mini computers, then the PCs, the internet, and then the mobile internet. And part of the, part of the study sort of reveals that how much and how fast the smartphones and the mobile devices are taken off, all, not just in the United States, but all over the world. Another aspect of the study says that the number of devices that run the software are going up. So if you think about the amount of software that was running or, or the number of devices running software on the main computers were, you know, there were millions of mainframe computers, but not that many. But now it, with, with smartphones, there are billions of smartphones and there's a lot of software running on it. Another aspect that, that comes to bear here is the fact that the, uh, the phones are just resource limited. We all know this. We know the fact that the screen size is small. We know the battery is limited. In fact, there was a study, um, there was a paper in the IEEE proceedings in 1995 uh, by Powers which said that battery energy doubles every 35 years. So it's by no way following Moore's law. Now as we get used to these new devices, our expectations of what these devices are capable, able to do is not going down. So, so when the PCs came, we expected the same thing from the PCs as we expect from the mini computers. And similarly, when the internet hit us, we were still trying to do all the things that we were doing with the PC, but now on the internet. So the same, if, if you sort of think about it uh, in that way, when we look at the smartphones, we are going to expect well, the smartphones to do the same things that the PCs were able to do. But because of the resource limitations, it is not clear how we can do that. Okay? So that's, that's, that's been a huge, uh, a huge problem. And so we think about how, how do we solve this, uh, how do we solve this problem. And we, we start to realize that uh, the problem can be solved if we take advantage of the infrastructure that is around us. Or, and there's a lot of infrastructure. For example, I'm standing indoors right now. And where I'm standing right now, I have access to lots of computing uh, horsepower that is sitting in the building somewhere here. Similarly, when I'm, uh, when I'm uh, Commuting, uh, I have access to the cloud, which is the large data centers, which have a lot of computing and horsepower and storage available to us. So why not marry the two together? And that's what Hawaii is about. Hawaii is a project that marries mobile computing to the cloud computing. Cloud is very rich in its resources, in, in CPUs and storage, and mobile is very rich in context information, the sensors that it provides. And it is right there with us all the time. And that's what we're doing. So Hawaii is basically, I think of Hawaii as a service store. Uh, all of you are very familiar with the App Store. You know about you know, the iPhone App Store, the, the Windows Mobile Marketplace. And so you, you know that uh, these things, you, know, you write an application and you can pull it down. So Hawaii is a service store which, is, which exists in the cloud. For you to be able to build very sophisticated applications, for example, augmented reality, for example, face recognition, uh, predictive behavior. I'll give you an example of predictive behavior applications. What if you're saying something and your smartphone is recording uh, all that stuff and is looking at, uh, looking at uh, your voice patterns and, and, your, and, your, and what you're saying and is able to detect that you said something wrong, then through a Bluetooth uh, device which is uh, plugged into your earphone should be able to tell you that you just said something wrong. So things like that, uh, really, really fancy and uh, heavy duty applications which require things like natural language processing, uh, require uh, you know, um, uh, for example, speech recognition, speaker recognition, for example, object recognition, things like that, which, which, uh, which you want to do uh, are the kinds of applications that we're targeting. So Hawaii provides these services that application writers can use to build such applications. And these services exist in the cloud. Now, <clears throat> so I think of it as a, going back, I think of it as a service store. Now, in order to do Hawaii, this was a partnership between Microsoft Research and some of the product group, for example, the Azure product group and Windows Mobile Phone. And so all of us have come together to think about what we need to provide uh, to different uh, users to be able to enable it. So uh, today, for example, in its very first version of Hawaii, we provide five to six services, and they include the compute and storage service, which is the Azure uh, service that you're very familiar with. They are also uh, provide identification services, which are sort of the Windows ID uh, th that you have. Because 
when you go to the cloud and you want to add the service, you need an identification. We provide location services, which is very fundamental to, to location and, and mobile computing, etc. We also provide notification and alert service. So if something has happened, interesting has happened in the cloud and it wants to inform you, then an alert is sent to your device so that it wakes up or uh, does whatever it needs to do with that uh, particular piece of device. We also provide an application depot, which is uh, primarily for research. And uh, we provide uh, mapping services, because if you have the location, then you want to map it to some uh, 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 service like Bing Maps, et cetera. So, so these are some of the uh, services that one is provided. And we are targeting, at this point, uh, the research community. We're targeting students. We care about uh, sort of the next generation of programmers, the next generation of, of, of uh, uh, users who are going to be, who are growing up in this world where smartphones exist. And these users will be able to take advantage of these services and we'll be able to provide these applications uh, on it. So for that, we are working with academia. We're working very closely. In fact, uh, uh, you know, we piloted this program uh, uh, in spring of 2010 and with, um, with the University of uh, California, Southern California, with Duke University, and with Wisconsin. Uh, and these partners went and taught courses uh, on this subject. And the feedback that we got from them was that these two courses were a major success. The students loved it. They, they liked, uh, they liked the hands-on approach to things. They liked the fact that how we were taking the, the new generation of devices and marrying them to the cloud and providing the ability to do it. And so because of that success, we decided to expand the program. And we have now partnering with many other universities. Many of them are listed on the website that you can go to and are also looking at other interesting ideas of how do we create an ecosystem which, uh, which really is self-sustaining. So we have community blogs uh, where, where students help out each other. We also have professors helping out each other. And we are looking into creating course cur curriculum around this whole space of, of uh, uh, mobile and cloud uh, uh, systems. In terms of services, we are also looking at new additional services. And part of our learning uh, comes from looking at the applications that students are building. And as they build these applications, we look at what are the kinds of things they are using again and again, and from that we develop a service. So for example, as we move forward, we are thinking of building a rendezvous service. A rendezvous service is a really important service if you want to do multiplayer gaming. Uh, similarly, we are looking at speech to text recognition. There are times when you want to, you have some thought, you want to speak it into your phone, it goes to the cloud, it converts into a text, stores it into your notebook. Similarly, we're looking at object recognition. I mentioned face recognition a while ago, et cetera. And all these services and the power of, of the algorithms that we have developed over the many, many years can now be brought to bear in form of services to these phones. And we're also working with academia to identify additional services. So, so having said all that stuff, uh, you know, we, we're doing everything uh, to, to make it also very simple. So for example, uh, in order to program, we are looking at providing a virtual machine uh, uh, environment where you just take the device, the virtual machine, you load it onto your PC, and then you're ready to go and start programming. We're also looking at ways of how do we distribute these applications. We are, we want to, we are fundamentally a research institute, and so um, as people write applications, we want to sort of see, you know, how can we provide more tools to do research. One example of that is a 3G test application that we did with the University of Michigan. Uh, as of today, uh, more than 70,000 users have downloaded that application. And what it does, it, it basically goes and uh, looks at the bandwidth uh, of, of the cellular network no matter where you are. And it looks at you know, different uh, aspects of TCP, UDP, et cetera, and then provides it to the users. And you know, people have downloaded it. But this is a pure research application that does require cloud because a lot of the analysis is being done in the cloud, but it also works with the mobile phone. So, so we, are, we, are, we have these uh, uh, courses going on. We are providing the infrastructure. Piece, you will hear uh, there is another talk that actually goes through the details of how you could build a Hawaii enabled applications. And we basically uh, view this as a partnership. We have seen students build some really unique stuff in there. And uh, uh, we have learned from that. So as, as we provide these basic infrastructure pieces, we also expect that new things will emerge out of it. And I encourage you to work with us to give us feedback, provide us uh, you know, more information about what you would like to see and what is missing and what could be done better. And we will, I promise you, we are all there to help out in that process. So thank you very much once again for, for participating in this. And, and please do contact us if you uh, need more assistance. Thanks a lot.